Hello, uh, welcome back to another little video. Uh, today this video is all going to be about a dead, dead easy uh, little cooler build that I've been tinkering with in my offline game. Um, now, quite often I do videos uh, for these tips and tricks vids and they're mostly done in debug, primarily because it's easy to just throw a build together in debug. Uh, this is actually my single player game. So I thought today what I'd do that's a little bit different, I'll show you my cooler design or the, the build that I've been using here um, and a couple of different applications where I've used the same design in a couple of places. So um, first things first, this, this build up here is primarily for cooling liquid. Uh, it's for cooling water to about 15 degrees to cool off my bristle blossoms. And this is my little bristle blossom farm here. Now, um, it relies on a couple of things. You do need to have a fixed amount of liquid coming in. You do need to have a feed of water, in this case, geyser water, to top up the build. Um, but other than that, it uses as much water as your plants use. Uh, it's intermittent, it doesn't run all the time. It's very low power usage. So, um, there's a little bit of automation going on here. I'll just explain the build first of all. What we've basically got, we've got a series of liquid pipes in the background here. We've got a pump that's connected to an aqua tuner. This pump either pumps water into the aqua tuner or bypasses the aqua tuner. Okay, dead easy. So it'll go into the aqua tuner if the aqua tuner is available through this port here. If not, if the aqua tuner is disabled by automation, it'll bypass and bridge into the aqua tuner's output, which is this pipe here. Okay, at which point it comes out of this vent. Dead easy. This other bit of piping that's running across here, it looks a bit confusing, but it's basically a pipe to a vent with some bridges. Okay, this pipe is our top up pipe that comes from our geyser water that's over here. And this is on a little liquid shut off that's basically again connected with some really easy automation to this hydro sensor. So, just to show you a bit of the automation, we've got a hydro sensor here that's basically saying if this water level drops below 20 kilos, top it up with some water from here. Okay, likewise, this hydro switch here, uh, this um, Sorry, this hydro sensor is just for toggling the system on and off. That's like an override switch for me, so my I don't have to get back in here with my dupes. And then this thermo sensor down here is basically controlling our aqua tuner, which toggles it on and off if the water goes above a certain temperature. Okay, so I want it to I want the aqua tuner to run until the water gets to this temperature, at which point I want it to turn off. Okay. This automation then goes a little bit further. We've got a knock gate here that's connected to a mechanized airlock. This airlock basically toggles this room separate from this room. And this is our water gathering chamber here. Okay, so what basically happens, the water will cycle through the aqua tuner that's fed in through these vents. It will keep cycling through until it gets to our target temperature, at which point it overflows into this chamber. Okay, this pump here delivers the water then down this little radiator setup and bridges deliver the water to each set of farm tiles, the hydroponic farm tiles. And in here we've just got um, basically some bristle blossoms. They're all lit up and fertilised. We've got access to the fertiliser station. It's just a nice little farming, farming room basically and we're getting the farming room bonus. Now, if all the farm tiles are filled with water, okay, as in they're all getting their maximum supply, the water then carries on its way up here and goes to another little vent so we're pumping out some 15 degree water up here and that's cooling the chamber. This, These metal tiles up here paired with these uh, temp shift plates in the background are basically cooling everything off. So everything is this nice sort of 15 degree, 16 degree and then down here at the very bottom 17 degree where it's furthest away from the metal plate uh, which is perfect for bristle blossoms. Um, so that's it basically. Uh, it's dead easy. We've got, at the moment, our pump is just running. It's backing up, as you can see now. The, the liquid is being fed into this room. However, this switch has toggled on, which is basically saying we need some more water in the system. So our liquid shutoff is enabled, which is topping up the build. And then it'll turn off, and that's our liquid done. And this pump just runs based on a little bit of automation here as well. We've got a hydro sensor so that I can turn the whole system off if I want. This basically says pump if you're above 500 kilos. And then we've also got a thermo sensor. And this is more for priming the system when I first set it up. Um, so I only want it to pump as long as it's cold water. Okay, uh, And that's it. It just runs constantly. It's topped up with, as I say, my, my geyser water down here that's at 85 and a half degrees at the minute. Um, so the water does come in very hot, but it's instantly cooled. Um, beautiful so this is for bristle blossoms um something that you'll probably want to build in your base at some point depending on what food you're going for 
Um, but here's another application for it down here. So this is my natural gas gen room. Now, at the moment, my, my base isn't actually all that developed, as in I don't have massive amount of power that I'm draining. I've got a lot of little aqua tuna builds here and there, uh, but for the most part, my power drain isn't that much. So my generators are intermittent. They toggle on and off as and when we need them. Primarily at the minute, my power is hydrogen power. So I've got these four hydrogen gens up here, and if I need it, these kick in and basically top my power up. Uh, you can see we've just spun up our natural gas gens here just briefly, so we're getting our CO2. But anyway, we've got the exact same build down here, just slightly in reverse. So we've got our aqua tuna, we've got a liquid pump. This liquid pump is actually just circling water through here, and it just cycles it constantly. It's just to spread the temperature amount around the pool of water. Then down here, we've got our overflow tank. So again, we've got the same mechanized airlock, the liquid overflows, this pump picks it up. And then this pump is sending water up here through a valve that trickle cools over all of our generators, which keeps our generators lovely and cold. Okay, so our generators are coming out at 11, 12 degrees. Okay, the beauty of this, the reason I'm doing this at the minute is because I want to cool down my output CO2, which if you don't know already, if you cool down a machine, uh, generally its outputs come out at the temperature that it's cooled at because this machine is just basically a big radiator that's what it's doing it's a big heat sink um, so our uh, CO2 is coming out at 10 degrees which is coming down here and starting to cool off my my ice bio so it's we're getting the most out of our cooling basically so it's the exact same principle the only difference is in this room I've got a transformer and a battery in the room and this is my natural gas overflow tank at the minute so we've got 113 kilos of natural gas stored. The natural gas gets fed into my generators. Uh, the CO2 output comes out of my generators. Um, and everything is cooled by this little system, which as you can see at the minute is inactive. It, it very rarely spins up. Uh, we've got the same principle here as well with a uh, uh, the top up here actually comes from my generators because these generators output um, polluted water uh, when they're actually active. They spit it out through these little nozzles, as you can see they're topping up the system. So we've had to do this one slightly different. On this case, if I have um, my water level goes above 50 kilos, then this little liquid shut off sends the liquid to my polluted water tank all the way up here. Okay. So again, just a couple of different applications. A lot of people say that a lot of my videos are all done in debug and you can't do it in a normal game. Well, this is my single player world. This is, this is my life solo ranching um so everything done in here is no debug at all it's all just built normally so yeah i hope that helps um a couple of different aqua tuna um builds for you to incorporate into your own bases really uh you could obviously extend this and do whatever you want with it you could do an oil build with this to cool a sleep wheat room um it's entirely up to you but yeah hope that helps much love as ever bye bye